welcome to Soul Symbols. My name is Shelley. I'm a writer, an astrologer, and a card reader, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Happy Saturday. It is the weekly energy card reading, and what that is is you, the viewer, get to choose from one of three tarot or oracle decks, and we'll go through and do a quick spread to see what the general energies will be like for the next seven days. It does not need to be the week of June 12th through the 19th, 2021, in order for the messages to resonate. If you come across this reading at any time, there may be nuggets of information contained for you. Now, if you ever want to skip over any of the intro, the timestamps are in the description box below, as are the names and the authors of the decks that I use. Now, I was a little hesitant. I've, I've, I was trying to film this uh, video yesterday um, on the, the new moon uh, lunar eclipse. And um, it's, it's not only a lunar eclipse, but it's also been a Mercury retrograde. <laughs> and um, and my, my microphone has been acting a little wonky. It took a really long time for it to charge, and that was making me nervous. I've definitely lost footage because my microphone has cut out before, so I'm really debating whether or not I need to like replace it. But so far, so good. I, I tested it several times, so I'm hoping um, that it does not conk out on me because that would be bad. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to continue the reading as normal and you know pray that there's no no problems along the way because <laughs> that's definitely you know losing losing film footage is like like when you're a writer and you lose pages of something it's really devastating <laughs> just so you know i know anyone who's ever uh worked on youtube or, or worked in film i know you you guys empathize so um, and the other thing is that I, I just cry because sometimes we have really great messages that come out and you can see that I'm reading the cards, I'm really in the in the, in the thick of the read and then the, the microphone cuts out and it's like, great, now you have to refilm everything and try to, you know, recapture what it is you were trying to say. But hopefully we are good with that. I've, I've really made sure the microphone was charged. So today we've got three beautiful decks here. We've got, um, I went ahead and went with like a crystal stone theme. Uh, I didn't, that was not intentional. I was just, I was really drawn to bring these decks out and it seems like all of the crystals are either f uh, clear or frosted, like clear quartz. So the first deck is the transparent tarot and on top of it we have a beautiful three spear uh, raw quartz. Um, the middle deck is the, um, Tarot of the Divine by Yoshi Yoshitami, and on top we have a also another point that has a frosted end, a raw end, and a, a, um, a polished end. And then the third deck is one of my most beloved decks. This is the Rider Wade, um, I'm sorry, not Rider Wade Smith. Uh, this is the Morgan Greer Tarot, and on top of it we have a beautiful piece of sea glass. And then to clarify, I know that I had promised, and I know I keep promising, I swear to you guys, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I just, I didn't want to bring out charms if my microphone was acting wonky. So um, I decided to go ahead and go with, I was really drawn to pull out my Oracle deck, the, um, what is this, the Architect, the Archetype Cards by Carolyn Miss. And actually, I, I was, I was drawn to do this, and right as, it's funny, I get little confirmations when I when I'm when my Rice Krispies are telling me to do something. And um right as I was pulling out this deck, I I had one of these cards set up in my daily card energy and that that card fell over on the table like, "Yes, use use this deck." It was like a confirmation to me. And on top of it, we have a beautiful uh, jasper, and um, this is a multicolor, like green, red, and, and clear jasper horse. So I feel like that's such lucky, almost kind of Jupiterian, Jupiter energy. But I'll go ahead and give you a minute to choose your pile. Um, please choose from your intuition. If you need more time, please pause the video, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. Let me go ahead and move up these other decks. We've got some beautiful background music. It's been, where I live, it's been nice and raining and uh, kind of this misty, rainy, good sleeping weather kind of, kind of weather. All right, guys. So deck number one, the uh, transparent tarot. 
and on top of it we have that beautiful three spear this is actually a gift with something I bought and this is such a gorgeous stone but it's a three-point uh, raw crystal so let's go ahead and see and if, if you haven't seen this deck before uh, what it is is it's transparent so each of the each of the cards have meanings and they overlap so if I get more than one one card I can kind of look at the energy combined which is really amazing it's a really cool deck but um so beginning of the week what's our energy pile number one what's our energy for the beginning of the week okay Ooh, these are like the same cards that I, I was just demonstrating that's interesting okay middle of the week please Oh my gosh, guys. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, and end of the week. Oh, fell on my lap. <laughs> and can I get one more card to clarify? Thank you. Okay, and we'll go ahead and get your oracle card. All right, guys. Wow. Um, so beginning of the week, this is really interesting energy. You got the ten of wands, you got the lovers, and you got the moon. And that's really beautiful. And what's lovely is that these cards overlap, so it's almost like you get you get an entire image of the you know how how these this this energy is combining, right? But I do kind of see like I think at the beginning of the week you this I do think that the the highlight of the beginning of the week because we got we got the lovers at the beginning of the week and your oracle card is lover. I do think that this week is pertaining to relationships for you. Um, at the beginning of the week, and this this kind of begins with the weekend, like it's starting with like the Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, I do think that you're gonna feel you're gonna feel a little bit kind of burdened and not in a bad way, but just. The Ten of Wands is about taking on duties that are not yours, like taking on more than the lion's share, right? And what you see is, what's beautiful about this card is that you kind of see in the Lover's card, there's a heart and then there's a yin and yang, right? And yin and yang is about balance, right? It's about balance. It's about, um, you know, feminine and masculine being in perfect kind of, um, I'm sorry, I am hearing, why am I hearing? I'm hearing ebony and ivory, you know together in perfect harmony. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of music, but uh, that's what you kind of see there. You see the dark and the light. Um, and But on top of it, what you see is you see the moon card kind of has that third eye. Um, what I kind of sense is that I do get the sense like you might be doing more in a relationship or you might feel like you're doing more. And it's just kind of you're, you're going to be kind of lost in your feels when it comes to a relationship at the beginning of the week. Um, either that or you might have a choice. Like the, the other thing about the lovers is it's about, it's about having a choice about something. Um, so what I'm kind of seeing there is like you have a choice whether or not you stay in a situation, right? And what I'm kind of feeling is with the moon, it makes you feel a little bit lost right like 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 you don't know it's almost like you don't know what's safe and what's not safe and I know that sounds kind of funny for a weekly energy but it's amazing you know when I see the moon um, because the moon in astrology talks about your emotions it talks about like your internal emotional drives like and what I really think of is I think of internal emotional scripts 
And a lot of the eternal emotional scripts can stem from childhood or can stem from experiences that you've had in the past. It could be from previous relationships. Maybe you've had a few bad breakups and then you meet somebody and and what 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 I'm kind of seeing here is that you see how the moon completely covers when you hold these two cards up together. It looks like the yin and yang is, I, I think what you're feeling is, I think you're confused about w whether or not you should work harder towards keeping this relationship balanced. But what I'm kind of seeing is that this relationship's a little imbalanced. And I get the sense that with the moon, it, it makes you fearful. It makes you fearful. You think, oh, okay, if I don't do 110%, this person's going to leave me and find someone else and blah, blah, blah. But that's not true. Um, what, what it really means is it means stay in your receptive energy. And that's also a moon concept. Be receptive, right? Listen to your third eye. The other thing is you see how this third eye kind of lines up with the the yang of the the yin yang there kind of lines up and what that means is it means uh, what, what I kind of think is you know how sometimes when when you get a little bit anxious in relationships you think okay if I don't reach out and call this person they're they're not gonna want to stay with me I have to I have to be perfect I have to be communicative I have to be this and but what what you're really doing is that switching you into yang energy Yang energy is masculine energy. It's assertive energy. It's you taking action. It's you calling and asking for the date. It's you making the plans for the date. And what I'm kind of seeing here is that's that's a lot of work, guys. That's more work than you need to do. That's more than the lion's share, right? And if you're a feminine or if you identify as feminine, this is energies here. You all you have to do is be in a receptive mode. You just have to. It's it's that there's a balance in life. If if you are if you are grateful for what's given to you, people will come forth and give you things. Right? It's you being in a in a yin energy. It's it's you being receptive. But if you start getting fearful about it. And you start thinking, okay, I have to do more. If what if this happens? What if that happens? What you really need to do is you need to listen to your intuition. You have to listen to your intuition and say, okay, you know. But the the energy I'm definitely seeing in the middle, the the beginning of the week is it's a little bit of feeling a little bit lost. Um, I do think that there might be a little bit of an imbalance in a relationship, and you're trying to make it balanced. But I do feel like you, you feel like maybe a little bit lost on how to do that. Like, how do I make it balanced? Do, if this person doesn't call me for four days, do I just leave us, leave us in silence? Do I do nothing? And, but what I'm really, I'm kind of seeing is, yes, I think it's, this energy is really kind of indicating that you've already done enough up till now. Like you've taken enough action. Maybe it's time to, the other thing that I think that is good is, what, what I feel like this is telling me is that over the weekend, lean back, lean back. You've already done enough. You do not need to be in yin. Try to be in the receptive energy. The other thing is if you are feeling kind of triggered, like if you're feeling kind of anxious or you're feeling like you need to take action, now would be a good time for you to kind of, and again, the moon is really good for that. Um, and again, we're not we're not so far out from a new moon eclipse, so there, that's a lot of good um, intention energy. Like you know, the new moon is about setting your intentions for the next two weeks, and it's also about setting the intentions for the next year. Um, and I would also kind of look at where Gemini falls if you study astrology. Look on what house that falls in your chart. If it falls on a seventh house of relationships, you'll probably be feeling this energy a whole lot. But basically what it's telling you is, um, the other thing I kind of sense here is that if you are apart from someone, like if you're separated from someone and you're feeling a little anxious about it, um, I'm thinking that you feel this person at night. Like, and I know that sounds funny, but you do. You feel this person in the, th in the 5D. You feel them in the ether. Um, it's it's I know I know folks who frequent 
you know, new age channels know what I'm talking about. But it's like, it's almost like you visit with this person in your dreams or you always feel them with you. Um, they can, you know, um, you know, there's a great, there's a great, Come, there's a great poem by E.E. E. Cummings that says, I carry, I carry you with me. I carry you, your heart in my heart. I carry your heart in my heart. And the moon in, in astrology is your heart. It's your emotions. And then you see this big, beautiful heart um, outside the yin and yang of the, the lovers. So, you know, uh, I'll, I'll try to post that poem. But, um, but I am getting that, I think it is encouraging you to, I think it's encouraging you to do two things. I think first off, if, if, um, if you are feeling anxious at all, like if you're, if you're trying to take action with somebody in a relationship because you're, if you are trying to take action based on some kind of fear or anxiety, I would say, you know, refrain, lean back. If you're about to pick up the phone, if you're about to call someone and ask them for a date because you're afraid of losing them or you're afraid, you're if you're feeling some kind of anxiety, um, I would lean back because it's really telling you that you're doing too much. You're doing too much. You're, you're burdening yourself with that. The other thing is it might be a good energy that while you're leaning back, instead of focusing on someone else being like completing you, think about what it is that's triggering you, like where that source is from. Because I think that would be very therapeutic, It'd be a therapeutic way to utilize that energy. Because I do think that's powerful energy, that's two majors, right? And the moon, definitely, the moon makes you, um, I always think of that scene in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs where she's running through the, um, the forest and she's looking at all the trees thinking that there's eyes staring at her that's kind of the moon's energy it makes you it makes you think there are goblins in the in the shadows when there's not and really what those goblins are might be some kind of early experiences that might have a, might have a, be affecting you now and and again you don't want to take any action especially in your major relationships based on any previous conditioning so beginning of the week, this is real important, guys. Now, first off, I also think that if you, this, this kind of dual, this, there's a duality here. If you take this energy, if you take this momentum and turn it inward, you will be strengthening your relationships. And I think you'll also be healing yourself. And it's interesting, they talk a lot, and you know, I, I don't like to use the term twin flame too much because that's, that's a very heavy concept where you know your your soul is split in half and the other person is the other half of your soul and when you come together you recognize one another um, but what I'm seeing here is that you, there's plenty of soulmate relationships there's plenty of people that you have a lot of commonality with and um, so you know whatever the the nature of the relationship here I am seeing more romance I'm seeing more of like a, a dating kind of thing but um, I do kind of see that the beginning of the week, it's almost like you're, you're struggling to keep yourself in balance. But if you, if you put all of that triggering energy into self-analysis, self-evaluation, self-healing, because that's the thing about uh, mirrors or twin flames is that if you're healing yourself, if you're treating yourself right, the other person feels it. Because remember we said you feel each other, you feel one another. So if you heal you, you're healing them. If they heal themselves, they're healing you. So it, it becomes a conduit. It becomes that, that yin-yang. Now the middle of the week, um, you probably saw me when I was shuffling. And here, let me go ahead. I'll grab the cloth so we can see this better. But um, the, the middle of the week, um, this is interesting, guys, is that... Um, on the side of these cards, if you look at the side of the cards, it actually gives you the number of the card. And the reason that it, you don't see separate numbers is because these are three fives. You got the five of pentacles, you got the five of wands, and you got the five of cups. So, wow, guys, this really just, when you look at this, and five means change right? It means change. It means challenge. So this isn't, this isn't scary, but what it is, is five of wands can be inner conflict. Five of cups, again, can be not, not seeing what remains. 
And I kind of like this depiction because a lot of Five of Cups see three cups fallen over and two cups that remain, and this one has it opposite. You have, you have three cups behind you that you're not seeing. You're seeing two cups fallen over. So that really tells me you, you feel like something's over relationship-wise. But the other thing is that three cups, when you look at the three, the three of cups in tarot, that's joy. That's celebration. That's creativity. That's indulging in your muses, right? And the five of pentacles really is about like feeling left out of the cold or feeling like a, a financially impoverished. So here in the middle of the week, I definitely see, I, I do get a sense like the middle of the week is going to feel like some challenging energy for you. Um, but what I'm really kind of sensing is I'm almost getting like kind of internal because you see how this is one person. Um, I'm getting this feeling like maybe it, this could carry over a little bit from the beginning of the week where maybe you feel like you're just not talking to people or maybe the love interest that you're t you want to talk to is not really calling you back or you're not you're not really communicating to them this much that week this week. But and then what it's doing is it's. I think, I think you've got a lot of in your head kind of battling. The irony is that there's no swords here. So I, I feel like you ever have those moments where, and again, when, when you've got the three of cups there, that's like feeling like you have nothing to celebrate, right? You have nothing to be happy about, right? Um, the other thing I get is that when you look at two cups overturned, sometimes that can make you feel like you, you feel like you can't connect to anyone. Um, either that or what um, you see how how these cups are stacked up so meticulously. It's almost like it's almost like you're not sharing your creativity with anyone. And if you do, it's all conflict, right? I do get the sense that by the middle of the week, it's almost like, I'm getting a feeling like you're going to be feeling like either, like, I know this sounds crazy, guys, but like either like you're not, you're going to be really hard on yourself in the middle of the week. And I please, I, I do really ask you to, you know, please be, be kind to yourself. Um, because here I just get the sense like you see this person just kind of s sitting, you know, um, what I'm kind of getting is, okay, I sit at home and just think about how poor I am. And then I go out in the world and then I just kind of, there's conflict out in the world. And then I come home and think about how I can't share my emotions or my creativity with anyone. Because the Three of Cups is also about partying with your friends too, right? It's about having, having um, others of your tribe. And so what I'm kind of getting is that I... I get the sense like you're you either feel like you don't have enough money or you don't have like you don't have anything to be happy about because the other thing I kind of get is that with this energy it's almost like you might be in a period of change right now you know maybe you're moving and you know money's a little bit tight or maybe you've been working real hard and that's the other thing with the five of wands maybe you've been working real hard and it's been a real challenge like everything has been I'm, I'm almost getting like you've earned everything tooth and nail like you you go out just to accomplish basic things and everything's a fight that's what I'm hearing everything's a fight and um Sometimes that can be in family or friendship dynamics, you know, maybe it is, you just, you do, you feel like, gosh, it's just not even worth it to try to go out there and connect with anybody because every single time I try, you know, all it is, is, is just, you know, conflict and isolation and feeling, the other thing I get is feeling like you're not accepted, you know, like you feel, that's what I'm really getting from this. I'm getting this feeling like you feel like, okay, I'm not even going to try because it wouldn't work out. There's too much competition out there. If, if I'm going to look stupid, if I go out and try to show this, this skill, if I, if I show people that I'm like, maybe like, you know, underwater basket weaving and you're like, oh, if I go out and show people that I weave baskets underwater, they're going to call me and, you know, call me a freak and call me out and you know and I don't have any money to do it anyway I'm getting kind of this energy um, now one other way I can kind of read it is that in the middle of the week it could be that you're in the midst of some kind of change where this really looks like a transformative week guys because no lie you started off the week with two majors 
this could be the type of week where maybe you are going through some kind of change with your relationships. Maybe you're cutting out some people. Like again, you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm tired of the conflict. I'm tired. I'm only going to surround myself with people who bring out the good in me or who, who accept what's good about me. Um, and the other thing I kind of get is maybe you're, you're trying, you're afraid to reach out to someone because you think like you don't have enough right now, or you might have, you might have some drama going on in your life where you think, okay, I'm just, I've got too much going on. That's another way I can kind of read the 10 of wands. It's like, maybe you're really missing someone, but you've got a lot of drama going on in your life. You know, maybe you owe people money. Maybe you got to move and you're like, I just, I, I, I can't approach this person right now. I just can't do it. It would, it would be bad. It would be bad timing. Right. Um, but in the middle of the week, I will say, you know, the, 98, and this is a statistic, and you can Google this, 98% um, of people dislike change even when it's positive. Because, of course, when you're going into change, you know, when you're going into a cycle of change, it's terrifying. It's like, I got to move. I got to find a new place. What if I don't make it? You know, it's like all these fears. It's all these fears because, you know, it's it's not stable. It's, it's, it's getting, sh it's your world getting shaken up. But... One thing I like to remind people, and this is one good exercise to kind of help with that uncertainty, and especially with the moon, that sense of, 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 of fluctuating, again, fluctuating emotions. Um, one good thing to remember is if you are older and you've had a few life experiences, you could even be in your 20s and have quite a few life experiences. Maybe you've moved a few times. Maybe you've changed a few jobs. Try to think back to another time in your life which was scary like that. You know, like remember the, think back to the last time you quit your job and you didn't have another job lined up and you were like, oh my God, you lived through that, right? You lived through that. So this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And, and just know that, you know, this kind of isolated energy I, I get the kind of feeling like I'm getting kind of a lone wolf energy towards the middle of the week because I feel like you got a lot of stuff up in the air. You might be, you know, there might be some fights going on with people. Maybe you're a little low on cash. And then, you know, and again, with these, with this being two cups turned over instead of three, I really don't see, I see that five of cups as not being a third party situation. I see that being like, like you're, you, you mourning the fact that you can't reach out to someone because you, you, you feel like everything is just so chaotic right now. Um, or it could be someone that you want to reach out to, but can't for whatever reason. But I would definitely, I would say in the middle of the week, self-care, self-care, self-care. And whether that is going into the bathroom and running your hands under some, um, because the other thing is uh, the, the number five is communication. So you think of five fingers, the five, also five in um, feng shui, just to put it out there, are helpful people. The people who reach out and give you a hand, right? So I would say in the middle of the week, if you're starting to really get in the blues, if you feel like everything's futile, like you don't have anyone supporting you, you're better off being in your room in a corner sitting. Because the other thing you see is this person's sitting on the floor. When this person's not fighting with someone, they're sitting on the floor. That breaks my heart, guys. That breaks my heart. You know, if you, if you are feeling like that chaotic, you know, go and do something nice for yourself. Please promise me that you will do that. The other thing is that you can have all this chaos going on around you, but you can still, you can create your own stability with, um, what is this, what is it, routine. You can, you can create your own ritual. Like, rituals can stay the same. You know, you could have all of your crap and moving boxes, but if you know that you go in and take a shower each night, have all of your crap and moving boxes, but go in and take a shower and take, take a long shower, really, you know, or run your hands under some warm water or cook yourself a good meal or, you know, order yourself some food if you can. I, I know that pentacles makes money a little tight. But do something nice for yourself or do something that you enjoy doing. It doesn't have to cost any money. 
Um, but try to do that if you're starting to feel in a lot of like chaotic or conflicted energy in the middle of the week. Now, by the end of the week, this is awesome, guys. This is wild. Um, first off, the first card you got was the King of Wands. And then above it, you got the Ace of Pentacles. Bye-bye, Five of Pentacles. Bye-bye, feeling broke. You got the freaking Ace. O over top the King of Wands. The mature masculine of the, the taken action suit. And then this one really wanted to pop out too. And what you got? You got the, qu the Queen of Swords. So what I'm seeing here, guys, is I'm seeing by the end of the week, there is a seed being planted of some freaking prosperity. This is money. You know, money, 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 money. And the crazy thing is, is that this is like, this is like you're like Jack and the Beanstalk, right? That's the, it's the one little seed. It's the one thing that you got left in the world that can grow into a fortune. And that's what the, the, the Ace of Pentacles is. The Ace of the Pentacles. And look, look at that imagery, guys. Look at how vibrant that green is. That green begets more green, right? And when I see the King of Wands, the King of Wands is someone who's, who has had adventures in the past. He's learned from it. And he knows that if you get a chance, if you really are curious about this energy, check out the How to Tarot on the King of Wands. Because there's a really great description in that. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to plug my, my own channel, but um, I was proud of that video. But um, the King of Wands is, I always, I always think of him as the guy who probably has arthritis. Because he, the King of Wands used to be the Knight of Wands. He used to be riding on his horse, doing, you know, going after whatever, whatever um, stirred his fancy. Whatever caught his attention, hey, let's go do that. But when you're the king, and it's good to be the king, when you're the king you've had adventures you've gone out and you've done impulsive things and you've learned from those impulsive things but the cool thing about being the king is that once you're in king status you sit on your throne and then you decide in that mature lovely king way that you do what the next adventure is and when you've got the king of wands with the ace of pentacles over it that that next adventure that you have your eye on that next adventure that you're willing to get off your throne for, and best believe the King of Wands, when he decides to do something, it happens. It happens. <laughs> and what I'm seeing here is the seed of something very stable. And the funny thing is it seems like contradictory elements because the wand's real impulsive, but when you see it with the King, that's a passionate beginning about wanting to start something stable. And then add in the Queen of Swords. You see how these people look like they're back to back? And have you ever seen those action movies? And you know how when, when you're surrounded, when you're surrounded by people who are trying to take you out, what do you do? You get back to back, right? It's funny, I'm such a child of the 90s. There was a great, um, there was a great TV show called the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. And every Friday they had Legend of Cartoons. And one Legend of Zelda cartoons uh, talk, that talked about that, Link was like, they were surrounded by all these bad guys. And um, in order to fight them off, they, you know, Link takes off his belt and he straps Zelda. They get, they get back to back and he, he kind of like straps them together. That's what I kind of think of here, guys. So what I kind of think here is that I feel like by the end of the week, you're teaming up with someone. This could be that person that you've been wanting to talk to. The other thing is that um, fire and air is very compatible. But the other thing that I kind of get is that if this is just your energy on its own, it doesn't have to be someone else. But in a minute, we'll talk about this. You got the lovers and you got lover here. So when you get a couple that's compatible by the end of the week, um, that might be you team finally teaming up with someone. Um, quite honestly, what I see here is that you might be cutting tides for people who weren't supportive of you, and by the end of the week, you are teaming up with someone who's really got your back. That's what I'm hearing, got your back. And 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 it's almost like it's almost like you're teaming up and you're getting back to back to start what you want to start, and it's a solid beginning, like it's a solid team. But if this is just your energy on its own, 
the Queen of Swords, and she's my, she's, I'm, I'm a Libra woman, so this is totally my significator, and she's no BS. No, noble, noble. She sets boundaries. She sets boundaries. So if you're a male watching this video, you might have come forth, like you might have, you might have come forward and actually talked to someone about what was going on in your life, and this woman has your back. And it's almost like she's guarding your back, right? Now, if this is your energy on your own, I think you're setting boundaries and you're watching your back. You're watching your own back, but then you're looking ahead, almost like a king. And you can be a woman in a king's energy, looking ahead to start planting what... You're, you're ready to move forward by the end of the week. You are ready to move forward. And you might have someone, and this could be a, this could be an air sign woman, um, or it could be a fire sign man. So the one way I kind of read it is if, if you're an air sign woman, you might be kind of, you might be guarding your back and then you might have a masculine who's kind of paving the way forward and your energies together is the ace of pentacles. You're planting, you're ready to start something stable together. That's beautiful energy, guys. Can I tell you how freaking awesome that is? And that's gorgeous. And even if it's your own energy, you're you're being your own king of wands and you're being your own queen of swords. You're going to set boundaries. If anybody's been making you feel like crap, you're not taking it anymore. You know, you're not taking it anymore. Now, um, your oracle cards really support. I love synchronicities. Look at this, guys. You got Samaritan. So you got... Ref, uh, refines your capacity ca it refines your capacity to help those that you would prefer to ignore and you got lover you got great passion and devotion unbridled appreciation of something or someone so maybe again you know with this five you know something that you would probably want to ignore you might be coming to the rescue of someone at the end of the week or someone might be coming to your rescue. Um, someone might be reaching out. This person that you were kind of thinking about. The other thing that I'm kind of seeing here is that with this um, this yin and yang, doesn't it look like this, guys? Wow, synchronicity, right? So whomever that you're working with at the end of the week might really come through for you. Um, either that or this could be just someone who really cares about you. But with the lovers being at the beginning of the week and at the end of the week, I think someone's really going to come through for you. And and again, I'll I'll try to find that video. I am a, I, this is bringing back some memories, guys. Gosh, guys, I haven't seen that cartoon in like decades. I'll try to find the cartoon. But she he's like quick back to back, and he he does. He takes off his belt and then he kind of straps them together using the belt, and they fight off the bad guys. And it's like you know. I know that sounds like a weird analogy, but I do just think, I think whomever it is that's helping you at the end of the week, or I really get the sense it's another person, this person has a ca capacity of being really your other, your other half. This person's really there for you. Um, but that's really beautiful energy, guys, because I do think, I think you start off the, wa the week a little bit kind of um, lost and feeling a little overwhelmed, overburdened. And by the middle of the week, you just feel like everything's spinning around you. And then by the, the end of the week, you're setting up boundaries and you've got a goal in mind and you've got, you've got help, you've got a partner, and you're ready to plant the seed of something new. That's really, really amazing, guys. And, um, you know, and even if it's, you know, again, I know we talk in such broad terms for just a weekly energy, but it, it does, it feels like a beginning. It feels like a beginning to you by the end of the week. But wow, guys, oh gosh, that was deep. All right, so deck number two, we've got the D Tarot of the Divine by Yoshi Yoshitami. So let's see, beginning of the week, deck number two. Popping out, end of the week. Ooh. Let's clarify the emperor. Oh, that's the 
second time the moon's come out. I'm, I'm not surprised with the fact that, uh, and honestly, the moon in, in these cards are full moons. And But on just last week, we had the new moon. And it was what they call, it, it gets so woo-woo with the way we describe it, but it's called the Ring of Fire. And um, I'm, I'm not just channeling Johnny Cash. <laughs> it's, it's where the sun is behind the moon and the moon comes in front of the sun. So all you see is like the ring of the flames outside, you know, like the circle of flames. And, um, and it was, it was like around 6 a.m. in the morning where you could actually see the, you know, you could see the circles. Um, but uh, what it is is new moons allow you to create an intentions, right? Like full moons are the culmination of a cycle. New moons is where you, you state an intention. You kind of like wish upon a star and say, okay, this is what I want to accomplish in the next two weeks or in the next month and also possibly in the next year um, because it's an eclipse. But let's go ahead and get your oracle card. Ooh. Wow, okay. And this is really beautiful energy, guys. You've got you got three majors in one week. Now, beginning of the week, this is really cool. You got the Knight of Swords. So the Knight of Swords, you're really um the beginning of the week I feel like is gonna be, you know what I'm kind of getting is I'm getting a lot of like fast and furious kind of communication but I'm kind of getting it I I'm gonna say I kind of sense it on almost like a social media kind of range maybe you I know this is so antiquated I won't say that you write a blog but um <laughs> maybe you do something online maybe you've been posting a lot of content on your social media platforms but here what I'm kind of getting is I'm getting an energy where you're really fighting for a cause and I know that sounds kind of funny, but maybe, um, like, for instance, I, I'm really, I, I have a, a passion for environmental causes. Like, I like talking about recycling, and I like to talk about, you know, um, sust sustainable living. And so sometimes, you know, when I get a wild hair, all of a sudden, you know, I'll be on the forums, like, you know, but we need to, you know, we need to switch to this. We need to cut down on one-use plastics and blah, 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 you know, and you're really passionate about it. But um, the thing with the Knight of Swords is it's it's that kind of passion where it's almost a little blinding. Again, this is a knight; it's not a king. So um, it's death. And if you if you want more clarification, I do have a great ha uh, video here on my channel called the How to Tarot, and we how to tarot. We've done the whole ta whole uh, tarot. Um, but the Knight of Swords one was fun because it really is about it really is about like almost not looking before you leap into a verbal discussion about something. You might not have all the facts, but you 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 think you have all the facts. <laughs> and goodness knows, we've all been there. Believe me, I have jumped headfirst into broiled de debates thinking that I know, I know, I know what's right, right? And um, that's what I'm kind of getting in the beginning of the week. But I am almost getting, I am getting a strong sense that this might be, this might be kind of something that you're passionate about that's kind of, this might be something that's in the current events. Like, and, and I'm, I won't, I won't go through a list of examples because I'm, I'm not monetized on YouTube, but I'm trying not to just, you can, you can end up in YouTube jail <laughs> if you say the wrong thing. And I'm not, I'm not condoning any like causes on my channel. I read cards. That's what I do. But, um, but it would be something like that, like world events, maybe, maybe you have, um, you have an opposite opinion to some kind of debate that's going on. It can be a political deb debate. It can be something about, you know, going on in world events. And I just feel like in the beginning of the week, you're going to be really voicing your opinion. And you are, you're going to be charging in. You see how he's holding up that knife. Like he's just, it's, and it's not like you're ready to cut anyone with your words. It's just, you're passionate about what you believe in and you think, and, and it, it, not to say that what you believe isn't right, but it's just one of those things that you believe what you believe and you're not going to be real inclined to he be hearing the other side. That's the other thing is that if you see the queen of swords, the king of swords, then you're inclined to hear the other side. 
and that's and, and I'm sorry that's diplomacy <laughs> that's diplomacy and that is something uh, just to throw it out there that is something that is is a little bit of a dying art with the advent of social media it's it's you know you post what you post you don't you don't have to yes you can read what other people write or what other people you know the replies and you can get all heated and mad but the thing about the thing about social media and the thing about texting is that words on a screen are so easily taken out of context and you don't really get a chance to be face to face with someone and you know before social media there was and you know and i'm sorry i am i am gen x there is there's some there's a beauty in being able to sit across from someone to see someone's face to put a face with the what's being discussed and having an honest debate and having a debate is saying i respectfully disagree but still hearing why it's almost like going back and forth and hearing why someone feels the way that they do about something the knight of swords is i feel the way that i feel about it and i'm going to tell you how i feel about it but it doesn't necessarily wait for a reply so that's kind of the energy at the beginning of the week now one other thing is this could be someone who's doing this to you like instead of you you know saying okay you're going to hear hear what i believe and i'm not going to listen to your side it could be someone doing it to you let me just get one card for clarification you see wow that's your card Two of Swords. Oh my gosh, guys. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm almost getting from this? And you see all this fire and then all this water. I think you've been biting your tongue about something. Oh my. Oh my goodness, guys. You've been biting your tongue about something. And then either Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you come out and you speak your truth. And yeah i do get the sense like you're not even going to bother with a reply this this gives it a whole new context i'm glad we got for i'm glad we went for a clarifier you know what this is you know what i always kind of think of with this combination because the two is the two of swords is like okay i'm, I'm going to keep my emotions under wraps i'm not going to say anything you see how she's in suspended animation even though she's got all this fire underneath her and then finally you, there, something snaps you, you you come out of the two of swords energy you know what i almost get and i know this is a crazy analogy but when i see this kind of energy have you ever seen celebrities when they go through a breakup and everyone's speculating about what happened and and the one celebrity is one one person's telling their side and the other one's just saying quiet 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 and then they're like okay time for me to say my my piece and when you say your piece it's not always diplomatic you're not waiting for a response and maybe you wrote a song about it you want to hear it here it goes <laughs> Um, that's what I'm kind of feeling <laughs> and I'm not trying to laugh but this is almost kind of beautiful energy and the other thing is because because it's like a white horse you're charging in on a white horse it's like I do get the sense like you're you feel like you're coming in with your pure feelings or thoughts about something un, un unabridged un, undiluted this is the skinny and um, but it is it's almost kind of beautiful and you do you're charging you're charging forth with this now the irony and it's not really ironic but it's funny in the beginning of the week you might come out and just kind of like you know whoop there it is about something that's been going on you might really kind of throw it out there and i'm getting like you might throw it out there in some kind of post or video Maybe you did sing a song, maybe you got up and sang karaoke or something, but you expressed yourself and it wasn't, it wasn't polished. That's the other thing I get with the Knight of Swords. It's not polished. It's not like you practice this like a speech. I almost get the feeling like you snapped out of it. You snapped at, you snapped and it just kind of came out like, you know, this, 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 you know, and then, you know, boom, drop the mic and what happened was it's almost like the moment you dropped it it's like drop okay i'm not even gonna s stick around you're not even gonna read the thread after you drop the bomb you you just say okay you wanted to know what this was about here it is and then you kind of walk away you don't check how people react i am kind of getting that like you dropped it and just don't even bother to check how people react to it 
And then this is kind of cute, guys. It's almost like after you do that, you kind of have a moment, you know, possibly it could be one of those things where it was late night and you just kind of had your filter was, you know, wasn't on <laughs> and you kind of dropped it. Then by the middle of the week, this is really beautiful. I see you really kind of pulling within. By the middle of the week, it's almost like you turn off, you go, you go off the grid. Um, you go in, I really see that maybe you're reading books. Maybe you're reading self-help books or catching up on your astrology. Um, you do see the moon in the sky. That is kind of like a new moon. Like, um, I get the sense that you really pull back. The other thing that I get is that you are stirring up a you're stirring up a heck a lot of a lot of intrigue about what happened. Like if you did say your piece about something and if it came out kind of blunt, it's almost like you're immediately pulling back into yourself. And people again, I feel like people are like standing around and going, Whoa, she totally cleared the air with this and and but where is she? She hasn't been back on the board. She hasn't been. She hasn't signed in in three days. What what's going on? And and you you you're you're unbothered. You just you're you're pulling back into yourself and being like I I said my piece. Here I am. Um, the other thing that I kind of get is that um, it's possible that maybe you did have like a flurry of activity on social media that really kind of had subtext to it. Maybe you were making some posts that really kind of had clarified things that people were speculating about. And then I do get the sense like you're going to go off the grid for a few days, probably for the majority of the rest of the week. Um, and you're just going to kind of pull within. The other thing I kind of get is that maybe sometimes it, it is always a little cathartic when you have some kind of post like that when you kind of lay lay your your soul bare like that when you when you sometimes i i go through this all the time too and it's funny i'm, I'm i have a stellium of air and then all of my all of my energy planets like my moon is conjunct my mars and cancer so that makes me real heavy in the emotions and the feels in the motions department and it's funny sometimes when I have like outbursts like that, like it seems like my emotions have just poured out my mouth and in a public forum like that, I do pull in because it's almost like, oh my God, where'd that come from? But also like, wow, that felt kind of good to get that off my chest. And that's kind of like what I'm seeing here. It's like in the middle of the week, you are um, you are just kind of pulling within. Now, the other thing that I get from this is that I don't think that any of what you're doing is ungraceful. Um, just because it's fast and furious and a little um, a little raw, I'm getting I'm hearing raw. Um, I'm getting the sense that people have, and again, not to compare us to celebrities. I know that's kind of a weird comparison but it is kind of like that when someone's been off the grid for a long time and then all of a sudden or when there's been speculation about something and then a celebrity comes out and they it might be kind of like a you know like a waterfall of of emotion um and then all of a sudden you know but it was profound it was like straight from the soul um you do kind of and then they go back into their shell Right, and it makes them real mysterious too. It makes them real mysterious. Now, one other way I can kind of read this is it's quite possible in the beginning of the week someone might be rushing up to you to tell you something, and then it's like, oh my God, you know, you you got the router's wire about something. The other thing I get is that this person might have been real quiet before. Again, same scenario. This person might have been really kind of whole, you know, not not showing how they feel. And then it's almost like they, they do, they either call you or they send you some kind of text message and really lay it all out. And then it's almost like you need a few days to really um, digest everything that you were told. You need a few days to think about it. And taking a few days and, and again, just kind of holding up. I, I think of I Dream of Jeannie. She goes back into our bottle for a while. Um, it makes you, I think what happens is whomever was rushing up to you and giving you all this information might be waiting for a response from you. And you almost seem really mysterious. The other thing I kind of get is that if someone rushed up to you and kind of threw information on you in kind of a blunt way, you're, you're 
um, you're absorbing that information in a very spiritual way. It's almost like it's like you're taking the impact of that inf information and you're kind of going within. You're going up into your temple to kind of figure out what it means to you and what you want to do and what the what the meaning of all of it is, right? And that's really gorgeous energy. The other thing is I do think that you're going to be feeling pretty spiritual in the middle of the week. Maybe you're meditating more or just, again, reading reading New Age books or just doing something to kind of understand the higher meaning of everything. Now, by the end of the week, this is really gorgeous energy, guys. you got the Emperor, and then underneath the Emperor, you got the Moon and the Ace of Wands. So... What I'm really seeing here, guys, is that I can kind of read this one of two ways. First off, you see the moon in the middle of the week. You see the moon here. And then by the end of the week, you see the sun. Um, I think that if you have been kind of laying low by the middle of the week, it's almost like by the end of the week, you're emerging like the emperor. Like you're, you're, you're stepping out into the sun. Like, okay, I've thought about what happened. I'm ready. I'm, this, is my, this is my realm. This, I'm going to do things my way. And that, that can be the high priestess energy because the emperor follows the high priestess, right? The other thing I get is that maybe, again, you know, um, the other thing I get is that maybe you got some news about something that was a little bit of a blunt blow and you, you kind of, you, you handled it very spiritually, you meditated on it, you thought about it, you thought about, okay, what does this mean? And then by the time, again, by the time you reemerge, you come out in the sun and you're ready, you're, you're King Arthur, right? Um, the other thing that I kind of get from this is that this could, this could be someone who's kind of approaching you and um you know so by the end of the week you could be dealing with like a real father figure or like this real strong masculine uh, i get when i see the emperor i see the type of masculine it is a little bit of my way or the highway but not in a mean way it's just kind of like they're they're approaching you and they're they have a structure about them like this this person that's approaching you and it could be a masculine that's approaching you um Underneath you got the moon and you got the ace of wands. And what's what's beautiful here is that this is King Arthur with the sword and the stone. You could quite possibly have someone who who is approaching you to be your emperor, like to be, you know, like the sword and the stone, like only only King Arthur could pull the stone sword from the stone, right? The other thing I kind of get, and especially with all this moon Im Im imagery here, is that I think that if this was some kind of something, some kind of bomb that was dropped, or or just you know some kind of belief system that was kind of relayed online, or um, some kind of verbal truth that was delivered, it's almost like by the end of the week you're ready to reemerge in your strength. You know, um, the moon in the moon in Lenormand, um, the moon in Lenormand talks about like honoring your own intuition, like honoring your own strength. And the Ace of Wands, which is really beautiful because this card shows a paintbrush, right? And we talked about how, you know, um, that, you know, paintbrushes just like pens, you know, can be very powerful, right? Um, I do just get the sense like by the end of the week you know what how you know how you want to rule your world right and um, so by the end of the week you're either speaking with a real strong masculine this can be like a spouse or a, a father figure um, it can be a boss you know, so one other way I can kind of read this is that, you know, maybe in the middle of the week you are kind of pulling within and kind of leaning on your spirituality. And then by the end of the week, you're ready to come out and lead. That's what I'm getting here, too. You're ready to come out and lead. One other way I can kind of tie this energy together is that maybe you did have an experience where you thought, thought that you knew everything about something. 
and then you you come out and you say it and then you're you're kind of proven like you're you're made to be like okay you're called out about something okay you thought that you knew what you were talking about but there were there were a few nuances of it that you kind of that you were the thing about the knight of swords is he can be a little biased you know he's so passionate about what he believes in he can be blinded by certain you know nuances of the truth right and I think that you go within and it's almost like again with that sword you're you're ready you're ready to be you're ready to be a reliable leader um the other thing I kind of get is that um I think maybe you've been worrying about whether or not you can have this new start, like whether or not, I'm also getting a strong sense here, like you could be deciding whether or not you want to start leading people, like you want to start um, uh, being a leader for some kind of cause, right? But you're passionate about it, you're, you're called to do it. But it's almost like you wonder if you can do it because that's kind of the moon's energy like okay can i pull this off is it going to be too tough do i have what it takes you know i i was impulsive before you know what if i'm what if i'm not mature enough to, to handle the responsibility of this but i do get the sense by the end of the week you're, you're going to be ready to go forward with something the other thing i kind of get is that you kind of thought through it both spiritually and like kind of practically in your head and the other thing i i'm getting strongly here guys is that i get the sense like this is what you're looking to do is not something that everyone can do because remember only arthur could pull the sword from the stone right so this is not something that everyone any just your average joe can can do um but what i am getting is that i think that this whatever it is that you're whatever it is that you're passionate about is really calling to you i think it's something that you want to do the other thing with the high priestess is it's about having us it's about having a spiritual purpose Right? She's the Vesta, she's the Vestal Virgin. She's the keeper of the temple. So um, I do think possibly also in the middle of the week you might be thinking about your life purpose in like a spiritual sense, not just, you know, okay, what pays the bills or what what do what what would make me look good career wise. But um but the the irony is that whatever you're thinking about serves both your spiritual purpose but also your your purpose in the world because the emperor is definitely i think of a capricornian energy i also think of like a 10th house the way the world sees you um but yeah guys by the end of the week you're either working with a boss figure or or like a father figure um and there's going to be if this is like um if this is like a, a father figure, there might be some kind of new project that your boss is asking you to take on and they think that you have the talent, like you have the ability to do, but you do feel like you're a little worried about it, like you're not sure if you can do it, but you are drawn to do it, like it feels like something passionate. The other thing I get is that it feels like something creative. It's something that would express your creative talents very, very well, and I do think that you would be leading other people with it right now the oracle card you got is you got martyr and it says learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause oh my gosh guys i'm getting that i'm getting like a cause and i get the sense that this outward action is going to serve people on a such a high level like you're gonna you're gonna be helping people evolve spiritually and i know that sounds crazy maybe you're contemplating starting a a, a tarot channel on youtube maybe maybe you're you're uh, uh you think about starting some kind of um i saw this great video here on youtube that talked about a lady in the 70s who uh started planting trees like she was an advocate she was like the only advocate for planting trees in um in um, industrialized neighborhoods, like really in New York City. And she was, she was the, she was almost like a martyr because she was like, she made no profit from it. There was no benefit. It was probably more work for her to do than anything, but it led, it, it created a green revolution. And, um, but 
here the shadow attribute is addition uh, addiction to self-pity which is a little bit of a shadow side of the moon but all of these cards are upright so i don't think that that's a problem in your read i do think that by the end of the week you're going to be real you're going to be gung-ho to try something new and you're going to be leading people in doing that um either that or you're going to have a boss or some kind of father figure um, or some kind of masculine figure approaching you to start something new and the moon is the moon is also a very nurturing energy but you you might feel like again you might feel like a little bit like a martyr to a cause that is one other thing with the story of of Arthur is that he he was just an orphan boy right before he was a king he was like a, a nobody right so it's like okay why did the sword choose me right why did the lady in the lake choose me and um it's because you have what it takes you have what it takes and i think i think also what it was about arthur is that he was he was not a selfish heart he was an altruistic person and i think that's what it's saying there is like learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself to yourself and a cause so wow guys this is a real powerful week i really think that if there's something that's calling to you or something that you really speaks to your your spiritual goals in life um you might be able to really start kind of a revolution with that and i know that sounds kind of weighty for a weekly read but um i would pay really close attention you know um, also, if you're, it's possible at the beginning of the week, maybe you see some kind of article that seems kind of radical, but you really get behind it. Like you, you feel, uh, like it's, it's your cause. All right. So deck number three, we've got, oh my gosh, that's the second time we've gotten the 10 of wands in the first position. I swear to you, I feel like we have cross watchers between one and three. It's always like one. One and three always have some similar cards, even though we have a, a reading in between. Okay, uh, the Knight of Cups is trying to pop out. Okay, so beginning of the week, we've got the Ten of Wands and the Seven of Cups. Middle of the week. Okay, end of the week. Okay, as we always do, please clarify the Three of Swords. End of the week. Go ahead and get your oracle card. And Prince is really like the um, two two popped out, so we'll go ahead and go with go with two. But uh, I always think of Prince being similar to the Knight of Cups, and the Knight of Cups was trying to pop out. So that's interesting here, guys. But um, beginning of the week, you've got the Ten of Wands, and it's rooted by the Six of Cups. Um, what I'm kind of seeing with this energy is I feel like you guys are going to be kind of working hard. But the reason why you're working hard is, um, and and I did I never really like this expression, so please don't take it personally when I say this because I I'm, I'm not. Um, when you've ever heard the expression uh, work smarter not harder uh, first off I think all people are smart I don't think anybody intentionally tries to do something harder than intent you know than than necessary um, but I am kind of seeing this it's almost like um, I, I see this kind of energy as being like have you ever had those projects that you had to like rip up and start over because it was just it wasn't it wasn't started in a real clear manner right like like if you're um, if you're renovating your bathroom you know how it is you have to really watch all the YouTube videos and read all the um, you know the how-to books on the 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 way that the step-by-step -step way that you um, that you do it because if you do 
if you do it in the wrong order, right? Same thing with cooking, right? And I'm sure all of us have had this experience if you're cooking something. And I remember one time it was crazy. I ripped out one of those like supposed to be easy uh, recipe articles from a magazine and, you know, dropped $75 in ingredients and I goofed and I skipped one of the steps or I got, somehow got out of order and it came out being like the nastiest quiche that you could ever see in your life. I ended up throwing it away like right into the garbage which is such a waste of money and food and it just broke my heart. That's what I'm kind of getting in the beginning of the week and not in a bad way but we are in a mercury retrograde so just to put it out there is that there's a lot of miscommunication, there's a lot of misinterpretation, um, maybe you just read something the wrong way. But what I'm kind of getting from this is that with the Seven of Cups and the Ten of Wands, because Wands is action and Cups is emotion, um, I feel like you might be kind of working hard because it's uh, I'm almost getting a sense like you, um, you feel like, okay, this is what I want to do. Let's go do this. And then you start doing this and you're like, oh crap, that's not working out. That's not what I wanted to do. Let me go over to this other cup instead. And then you start working on that. And before you know it, you have seven started projects and none of them are finished. And you, you I, I get the sense that you're kind of waffling a little bit. It's like you start getting into one thing, you get, you get started, you get invested in it. And it's like, oh no, 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 that's not, that's not what I thought it was going to be. Right. That's not what I was thought it was going to be or or that's not working out. Let me go over here and start this instead. And what it's doing is that each one of those false starts or each one of those here, let me go do this is is giving it's causing a lot of work without any reward. Right. I, I get the sense like you, you're you're kind of flitting from thing to thing to thing. And it's it's creating all of this um, extra work for you. Um, one other way I can see this too is that um, right now in your life you might have a few options emotionally or you might have a few options work-wise or creatively. Um, sometimes I kind of see this as the card of being like, well, I'm the treasurer for, you know, this volunteer group. And then I agreed to be, you know, to do the camp out for my kids Cub Scout group. And then, you know, but I also have been writing that book and I need to get that chapter done. I get the sense that you are wearing yourself out because you're not saying no and you're not making a choice. Like you're not committing to one cup or one or two cups. And, um, and it's like you're starting all these projects or you're investing in all these projects and it's becoming, it's going to catch up with you, right? And that's kind of the energy over the weekend. But the thing is, is that half of this is not so much that you've actually committed to this project. It's just that you have the option to. And until you actually, that's, yeah, bingo. I'm hearing bing, 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 um, you know, ding, 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 winner. Um, you have the option to do all these things and you, it's almost like you want to keep all those options on the table but in order to keep all those options in the table you have to keep all of those options as leads you know like again like they said hey you know i heard you said you wanted to be our treasurer you want to do it oh i just need some more time to think about it just give me a few more days and then hey i heard you wanted to go camping with the cub scouts you know it's this weekend can you do it oh here just give me a few more days and it's becoming more work because you're not making a decision and all the options look good um, so you're keeping all your options open, but that's making you feel real dissipated. It's like it's fragmenting your energy and it's it's working you down. It's wearing you down. So it, it could be that you, you might, I, I don't see you actually making any decisions over the weekend, but you, I think um, what I see is by the middle of the week, um, I kind of see a progression of energy here. And the thing is, we're going from the Ten of Wands to the Nine of Wands, so you are going to start to back down a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think I think that you could... Now, one other way to throw it out there, just to throw it out there for a very few of them, few of you, if you're dating, it's quite possible. Um, and goodness knows, when, when you start dating again, you know, the world is starting to come back alive again. Maybe you've been talking to a few people and... Um, 
it is it's hard to regulate because sometimes right when you get back into the fray of dating you get you get a lot of really good prospects at first and you don't want to rule out anyone but then you're exhausted because you're you're texting seven people in a day um, and you don't you again you don't want to make a choice so that is one option as well um, if that pertains to you um, but what I kind of see is, yeah, you're not making a decision yet, but it's it's that by not making a decision, you, because all the options look so good, and you don't know which one's the right one, and it's Mercury retrograde, and you don't want to make the wrong choice, um, you're, you're doing more work to maintain that those options stay open to you. Now, by the middle of the week, this is interesting energy, you got the Six of Pentacles, and the Six of Pentacles is about being fair right? And it is about the rich man kind of giving the coin um, to the person who deserves it most. Now, this is kind of interesting energy, guys, because we're going from the Seven of Cups to the Six of Pentacles and going from the Ten of Wands to the Nine of Wands. So it's kind of like you're paring down, but just by one. <laughs> you still you still got six, you know, you're going from Seven Cups to Six Pentacles and you're going from Ten Wands to Nine Wands. So it's not like you're you're not narrowing it down a whole lot but you are paring it down a little bit. Now, what I kind of see here, the way I kind of read it is just like we said, I think by the middle of the week, um, especially because pentacles kind of means investment, it means like um, actual something physical, something of value. Um, I think by the middle of the week, I think that you, you're gonna deem that all of these projects have value. Um, the other thing that I kind of, the other thing, oh, sorry, I don't know what that was. That was like a cat. Um, <laughs> um, I do think that the other thing I kind of get with the Six of Pentacles is Six of Pentacles is about being fair. It's about someone who has more giving back to those who have less in a fair manner. But this card is also notorious because it's kind of like the breadcrumbing card. I'm not going to hold you. It's really like... It's, it is kind of like you giving enough, you know, like you have more than enough, you have plenty of options. So here, let me just give you one extra little coin to keep you going, to keep you, you know, it is a little bit of breadcrumbing. Now, I like this, this deck of it because this deck actually has it equal. In the traditional Rider Waite Smith, you see like three coins on one side and two coins on another. But you know what? Actually, that really makes sense because when you have three coins on either side and even scales, if he gives one more coin to someone else, it's going to be imbalanced again. Ooh, oh my gosh, that's the first time I've ever noticed that. Um, you know what? I think I'm seeing a little bit of a theme here, guys. I think, I think by the beginning of the week, you're really working yourself ragged to keep all of the options open. By the middle of the week, I think that you, I think you keep everything balanced, like you, through your hard work, you keep everything balanced. But in the middle of the week, you're going to have one of these parties. One of these, one of these parties is going to be like, I need more, right? I need more commitment. I need more stability. I need more value from you. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to use your best judgment to say, okay, and it is almost like you choosing a cup. You're going to use your best judgment to say, okay, who needs this coin more? But when you give that, when you put that coin into one or the other hand, you're, you're causing an imbalance, right? So again, I, I feel like you're trying to keep all your plates spinning and by the middle of the week, you're going to be put into a position where you kind of have to make a choice. It's also possible that maybe you, somebody needs money and you kind of go ahead and give that person money. I am just going to pull one more card. we got a million cards here, but um, please clarify just one card. Tower. Wow, Knight of Pentacles, King of Swords, the Tower. Yeah, wow, guys. You've been working really hard for your money. The other thing I get is that there's a lot of communication. The other thing I get is that you've been working hard to keep everyone cooperating with one another. So this could be a family dynamic. You could have been working, like really working your butt off, communicating with people, keeping things balanced. 
but in the middle of the week someone's going to come to you someone's going to be like someone's going to come to you and kind of ask for something more and you're going to look at their request like it's warranted like okay yes this person deserves to be given a little bit more but I'm not I'm not gonna lie guys the moment that you make that decision and it's a fair decision like it's almost like you like if if you're if one family member says hey can I borrow 50 bucks and you're like no I and it, let's put it this way you have one family member that's hitting you up for 50 bucks and you know that they're gonna squander the money but then you have another family member that comes up and is like hey can I borrow 50 bucks I really need it I'll pay you right back and you think okay this person deserves it and you go ahead and give it to them but the the other family member finds out about it and all hail all hell bursts loose you know like you've been communicating you've been working hard to keep everything balanced and it's almost like middle of the week you something happens to get us off kilter something happens to get us off kilter um or you 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 maintain the balance you, you keep all of your options open until the middle of the week and you're good there but then something something knocks over your apple cart something gets those scales out of balance because by the end of the week you got the three of swords you got the nine of wands which again is the ten going down by one the two of cups in reverse and the five of swords and I don't I don't want you to be afraid there's no bad cards in tarot and honestly I don't think this would be a surprise again I get the sense like you you know how you working as hard as you have been you know what that's about you know that that you basically you know the players in this game right if if if, if this blows up and if this blows up you'll know who the culprits are and I'm, I'm almost kind of getting that. I get in the middle of the week that you might actually go and do, take some kind of fair action, by, but, but by you taking a fair action towards someone, someone else interprets that as you making a choice and that choice not being them. And I do think by the end of the week, you are gonna have a little bit of conflict here, guys. A little bit of conflict. And I do get the sense, like, I get the sense that this is someone from your past. This could be like a high school sweetheart or someone from your past. I'm definitely getting a love relationship here. But by the end of the week, you're going to feel a little bit committed or obligated to someone. Someone's going to make you feel a little bit chained down, right? And what what they're doing is, it's it's almost like, you in the beginning of the week you're feeling really burdened you're working your butt off you're communicating you're doing everything in your power but you don't you you have options of what you want to do but it's almost like you want to keep all your options open you just want to keep the peace you want to keep everyone cooperating right and i do think that this is like money related is this money related where like if um I do feel like someone kind of has you on the hook a little bit financially. It's almost like if you take one step out of line, this person's gonna gonna stab the hell out of you. And um, and I'm not gonna lie, I feel like by the end of the week, this person is gonna be pulling that shit. Part of my French. Um, I do think this is someone that you know from childhood, and it's it's almost like it's almost like you're you it's almost like this person has known you for so long or you've or you've been you've been together for so long um because we have another six right um we have six and six here um but this person you do you do you feel like there's some kind of obligation also this might feel like an obligation from someone that you've known since you were young um, but you're you're not feeling connected to this person anymore. Uh, you really feel like this is like a, a winners and losers situation. This person is really making you feel like a loser, like they're trying to make you lose. And it's almost like you have to fight tooth and nail and you're kind of exhausted. You're kind of exhausted. But what I do kind of see is I'm actually seeing the Three of Swords in a little bit of a good light, um, which I know is crazy for the Three of Swords, but I just, I get the sense like there's some kind of happiness that I do kind of get like a third party situation here 
and I get the sense that one person kind of has you under their, your, their thumb. If you take one step out of line, they're not afraid to, to make this a loser, a winner's loser situation. And you really have to, you have to keep your guard up from them doing that to you. But what it does is by you continually to stay under this person's thumb, it sustains the pain of this third party situation. Like you, you have to stay in the misery. It is, I'm, I'm getting like a little bit of a kind of prison vibe. Ten of Cups, please clarify. Another three, sun, judgment, four of swords, the sun, three of cups. Yeah, I know this sounds so crazy, guys, but I really get the sense like it. you really, what I'm getting is I get the sense like you want to cut someone off because you've been balancing. Um, it's almost like you, you really didn't know what to do. You're working, you're, you're overworking yourself. It's a burden. You're really kind of obligated to someone and you're keeping the balance and i do think that if judgment is saying okay if you go ahead and make the break if you get yourself out of this third party situation if you pull the swords out you know if you get away from this situation that's creating winners and losers right um if you get away from that you'll have happiness but you know, let me just see who is who is doing this. Um, who's doing this? Okay, what is what, what's the source? Page of Cups. It could be. This could be that someone has kind of done this to you, and they really need to apologize for it the other thing I'm really getting is I'm getting a lot of balance like the chariot is about channeling two opposing forces um, just for a few of you out there because the other thing I'm seeing is I'm seeing the page of cups and I'm seeing the chariot this could be about a child in a car and I'm not to be weird like that, but maybe you're in some kind of legal dispute and it's like you can't you can't leave this person until you, you give them back a car or you buy them a car or um the world. The world is, is about the ending of a cycle though. And the other thing I kind of get here is that, you know, if this is someone who's been kind of pulling this crap with you, by the end of the week, I think you're going to you're going to feel like like you're just you feel like you're you you've had enough. Like you've just had enough. You had enough and it's almost like you're ready to wrap up whatever this is. You're ready to wrap up whatever whatever this is. You're ready to move forward with your life and you're ready to, it's almost like you're ready to start afresh. You're really ready to start afresh. You really, I'm getting like a real kind of genuine energy of wanting to be away from this kind of energy, which is great because this, what I'm seeing is not really healthy. Um, you know, what I'm kind of seeing is I'm seeing like being, being, being addicted to some kind of good memories in the past that were so long ago that were really a long time ago and you know this person you know this person you don't connect with this person plays plays games plays win lose games with you and what i'm really seeing is that you you've been very strong you've been resilient but you don't have to stay in in a in a position of pain. You can you can let go of that. You can you can remove yourself from that situation. Um, some advice for the just one last card for the advice of the three of swords. That is a tough card. Advice for the three of swords. Knight of Cups, strength. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I mean, honestly, guys, this could be someone that you're dealing with that this might not be your energy. This could be someone that you know that's going through like a really tough time. Um, it's possible, and just for a few of you out there, you could be dealing with someone, you could be like interested in someone relationship wise that might have either an ex spouse or um, an ex girlfriend that is really really putting them through the ringer um and you know that's you know by you being with this person it's like it's like you're subjected i'm i'm just really seeing like this kind of toxic relationship here guys i'm so sorry but um by the end of the week i see you being strong i see you being strong i, th I see you being resilient but the the thing about the th the, the three of swords the three of swords is about kind of sudden pain but you don't have to stay there you can you can remove yourself from that situation you know you don't have to stay in that energy and that's what i'm really seeing here let the cycle close move forward it's almost like take take per, use that energy to propel you forward right and um and and you can start off real innocently too that's the thing with the page of cups that's really beautiful kind of new new life kind of energy now the two oracle cards you got is you got prince which is romantic charm and potential for power and the shadow attribute is using power for self aggrandizement and the other one is athlete dedication to transcending physical limits including handicaps development of personal willpower and strength of spirit so gosh guys here I am really kind of seeing that I, I think that you have a strong heart I think wherever you if you if you have a goal for moving forward I do think that this week is going to be a little bit challenging I do see with like athlete I kind of see that as like strength right you know dedication to transcending physical limits right and um and pentacles is physical so i do think that maybe if if you know you might you might be dealing with someone who's a little bit you know who's making your life a little bit miserable but you are gonna you are gonna be strong again we got strength we got the nine of wands and we got athlete The other thing I kind of get is that maybe maybe you really do need to break away. You have to make a choice between those cups. You have to break away from something that's really not good for you. And but if you break away, you can turn and there's there's something else that's right there. You know, if you if you're that king of knight of cups, you can you can turn around and go. Uh, it's almost like saying, you know, don't be afraid to let go of what's hurting you in order to make your happiness a priority. So, and I know that sounds real trite, we say that all the time, but in that spread in particular, you know, especially towards the end of the week, you know, just, you know, put, put your happiness first, you know, put your happiness first. Don't let anybody keep you in a place that, that, that is, causes you pain. But all right, guys. Well, I thank you so much for joining me. Um, it, it is a powerful week, and and definitely, if the messages are not resonating, you know, please, you don't have to take them to heart. You know, just we always say, take what resonates and leave the rest. But I wish you all a wonderful week, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.